Hello friends, and welcome back to another episode. So today I would like to talk about the Policy Buff Company and basically the difference between the Alien Bees and the Einstein 640. There's another house brand within the Policy Buff umbrella. It's called White Lightning, but generally they're, they're, they're more powerful and they're generally not used in, in general photography, right? Most of us use either Alien Bees or the Einstein 640. So let's talk about the differences here in between the Alien Bees and the Einstein and its app, their applications. Okay, so I have here represented some tick marks and these represent stops. Okay, and I'll show you here. I'll show you here what these look like. So you can see this is a, a B400, but it's full power, half, quarter, eighth, sixteen, thirty second. So that's six stops of light. This is the B400. The green one over here is the B1600. And I'm just using them to keep my whiteboard propped up. Okay. So now let's talk about applications. Okay. So we're going to use here as a standard, everything is at ISO 100. Shutters at one over one twenty-five. Okay. Now let's say we're doing we're doing a boudoir shoot. We're in a hotel. I have a softbox set up. It's a double baffle. The light has to travel through two baffles. It's five feet. So I have my light set five feet from the bed. Okay. And if I take out my uh, light meter, I'm generally going to meter at about right here. F. F two. Minimum power setting. I'm going to get about F two. Again. ISO 100, shutter 1 over 125, the light is 5 feet from the bed, traveling through two baffles. Uh, I'm going to get, the aperture is going to be F2, minimum power. So the B400 starts at 5 watt seconds and goes to 160 watt seconds. So twice the power equals twice the light equals one stop of light. So if we bump the power up to 10, right, we bump it one more, one more click, we're going to get about F2.8 and then four, five, six, eight, and eleven. So, so let me talk about that. So the B400 is actually quite versatile. And this is important, especially in boudoir, because you want a nice shallow depth of field in boudoir, right? So two is, is workable. It's a workable aperture in boudoir. And if you want to do portraiture, so let's say you bring your, back, your backdrop, portable backdrop, you have a seamless paper, whatever, black muslin uh, backdrop, you can throw it out and you can still get portraiture. The light will still be bright enough It'll throw out enough power that you can still take portraits at F8 and F11. You can do on the bed boudoir at F2 and you can still get portraiture at 8 and 11. So it's a very versatile light. The price is $225. Okay, let's move up to the B800 now. It's, it's more power. So the minimum power setting now, so again now if you have the model on the bed, everything is identical. You're still at the lowest power the minimum aperture you're going to get is 2.8. Now that can present a problem in boudoir because that's a little too small for boudoir. Okay, you don't want to really be that small in boudoir. You want to be 1.4, 1.8, 2, somewhere in there, okay? So already this, the B800 is too powerful for a hotel shoot, for a boudoir shoot. Now again, not for, like if you're going to go outside by the swimsuit or, or you know, by the swimming pool. I'm talking about in the room in a confined space where you have minimal distance to set up your light. The B800 is already presenting a problem of being too powerful. So it's going to start at 2.8, and if we add one more stop, we get to 16. Okay, F16. It's a little bit crooked of a 16. So the, the B800 goes from 2.8 to 16. Now, the good thing about a B800 is if you want correct fill flash outdoors, you want to match ambient outdoors, right? And it's the sunny 16 rule. The sunny 16 rule is if you're out on an average day, a bright day, you can, if you have your ISO at 100, shutter 1 over 125, you're generally your aperture is going to be about f16, and that's called the sunny 16 rule. So if you want correct fill on the model, and you're in ambient, and you don't want the harsh sunlight on her face, you position her in such a way that you're getting correct fill on the model. It's not the harsh sunlight hitting your model. Okay, and that's where the B800 can really come in. You're it, you're in the ballpark of good outdoor. Uh, apertures okay and then we get to the B1600 which is this one now again we're in the same hotel everything is the same but I switched my light out and now I'm on a B1600 
my minimum power for, for boudoir, the models on the bed, is now F4, which is even smaller. I can't use, really, I clearly can't use F4 in boudoir. It's too small of an aperture. But on the good thing, the good point is now, on my high end, I'm at F22 for uh, 640 watt seconds. It's going to give me F22, which is even better in daylight. Because sometimes, to, to really get a deep blue sky, if you really want a great outdoor image, you set your strobe so that it's one stop more powerful than ambient. Because what it'll do, it'll highlight your subject, your, your, your subject will stand out against the ambient, the ambient will go a nice beautiful, the sky will go deep blue, and your model is a little bit overexposed than ambient. But it has a wonderful effect, and you can get that now with the 1600 because you're at F22. So this is the great thing. Oh, let me cover the prices again. So the B400 is 225, B800 is 280, the B1600 is 360 dollars. Now we've talked about the three, the three alien bees and their applications. Okay. Now we're at the Einstein. The Einstein is 500 dollars. So you can buy two 400s and have change left over. But here's what's great about the Einstein. The three, you can see they're graduated here. The three alien bees are all six stop lights. When you come to the Einstein, it's a nine-stop light. So here's the deal. Right here, the second stop is F2. But there's one more stop on the Einstein that the other three don't offer. And this is two and a half watt seconds. So what does that mean if it's one step even lower than the B400? Same boudoir setup, right? Everything is the same. But now you put an Einstein on your light stand, look what you get. You get F. 1.4. Okay, now you went from a 2 to a 1.4. Now you talk about boudoir. You're really in a good position for boudoir now because you're at 1.4. And if you have a 1.4 lens, you're hooked. It's a beautiful, it's going to be a proper exposure at 1.4. So look at the versatility of the Einstein. It'll go all the way from 1.4 all the way to outdoor work at f22. So it covers all the spectrum of the, of the alien bees, every one of them, plus one more. And that's two and a half watt seconds. Again, if you're indoors for boudoir, you're getting your f1.4. So, my point is, is okay. So let's say your budget. First of all, it's your budget conscious. You're going to have to ask yourself, what is my main application? What am I trying to do with my strobe? If it's mostly hotel work, like boudoir and glamour stuff, like if you're indoors and you're doing hotel shoots, I would recommend personally the B400. Not only is it the cheapest. But you can use f2 for boudoir work. It's not too it's not too small of an aperture for boudoir. Especially most of us, if you have a 1.8 lens, you can't even go down to 1.4. So it's a basically it's a non-starter. So if you have a 1.8 lens, all you got to do is to turn it to f2, and it's a wonderfully shallow depth of field. Great for boudoir. You're good. And again, I said if you want to, after you do the the lingerie look, you want to go to a portraiture, head and shoulders portraiture in the room. You've got 8 and 11, which is more than enough for your portraiture. But the thing is, it's really limited for outdoor work. You can't use it outdoors. So, again, if you're primarily outdoors, discard the B400 and you want to look at either the B800 or the B1600. Maximum flexibility, again, I'm kind of restating a principle here. Maximum flexibility, if you want one light that can cover the entire spectrum, very shallow depth of field for boudoir work, 1, 4, and 2, and also get you outside, you're getting very powerful 16. It's correct fill, correct fill is 16. They call it overpowering the sun, right? Overpowering ambient is really what it is. But that you get that at 22. Overpowering the sun starts at F22. So you go from your most shallow depth of field, boudoir, to overpowering ambient, overpowering the sun at F22 in one strobe, and that's your Einstein. But it's $500. So make a, uh, uh, a long story short. If you have the $500 to spare, I would definitely recommend the, the Einstein. If I had it to do all over again, knowing what I know now, I started out with the B1600. Uh, I didn't know really too much. Again, it was a, for me, it was a lot of trial and error. It was way too powerful for my boudoir work. Okay, way too powerful. But it was good for outdoors. My, I got a B400 for my boudoir work, but it's limited on outdoor work. So I actually got two strobes. And I could have just gotten one Einstein and it would have covered the entire spectrum. It would have given me the most shallow depth of field for my boudoir work. And it would have let me overpower ambient, overpower the sun for my outdoor work. So, so again, that's what I'm trying to say is first of all, ask yourself, 
what application are you intending to use it for and again let this be your guide you know now if you can afford the 500 definitely go with the Einstein it's a one it's a multi-purpose light it will cover everything you only need one light done done Einstein but if it's too ex too expensive then you'll have to weigh these other options and to see which one is right for you okay so again it's two and a half watt seconds and again when you double the power you double the light you double that's one f-stop so there's one f-stop between each of these increments okay and that's how it works all right uh, I hope you found this useful. If you would please be so kind as to like and subscribe, I would sincerely appreciate it. And thank you again for watching.